Imagine being able to participate in your local city council hearing from the comfort of your own home. Imagine being able to take continuing education classes without commuting to school. Imagine being able to watch any movie you want to watch when you want to watch it simply by dialing a special number. Up until the 70s, our TV choices were fairly limited. Then along came cable and numerous technological advances, from satellites to digitization, and now the possibilities are limited to only what we can't imagine. The cable box that you're used to having for decoding in the, in the home will soon be a, a computer, a full-fledged computer. What that will allow you to do is have uh, lots of signals coming in which you can pay for on an individual basis rather than subscribing to individual channels. While broadcast TV uses public airwaves and can be picked up by anyone, cable is restricted to viewers who pay to have it wired into their homes. The different technology used to send cable TV gives buyers access to a much wider variety of channels, from nature channels to sports channels to movie channels. The list could one day be endless. It's now possible to deliver not 36 channels to a home, but 250. Since cable companies use public property to build their systems, their franchises come with some obligations to the city. For instance, in Seattle, our three cable companies are currently obligated to run three PEG channels, otherwise known as public access, education, and government channels. Channel 27 is Seattle's education channel. We're currently producing some bilingual classes aimed at uh, secondary students whose native language is Spanish and Vietnamese, and we are those four days a week currently on Channel 27, the educational channel here in town. And we're beginning to uh, do some production of staff development uh, in science and in math. And at the same time, we're uh, putting together plans for a homework hotline in math and science that we'd air after school each day. Both Washington's K through 12 and higher education communities have numerous uses for cable, from traditional classes to information for everyday use. There's one educational channel, and we currently broadcast enough classes that we could fill two each day. It's been moved and seconded that the Channel 28, Seattle's government channel, faces a different dilemma. The purpose of the, the government channel is to give the citizens of Seattle a window on the workings of uh, city government. And that includes uh, the workings of the mayor's office, the working of the city council, and the working of the agencies um, that are part of the city. Part of the problem with that window is that it's a very, very rudimentary window. Uh, that's, it's a very rudimentary window because uh, Channel 28 uh, which is the municipal channel, has a very, very, very limited budget. Channel 28 is, in effect, one person who works in one room of antiquated TV equipment. I love Java, sweet and hot. Channel 29, Seattle's public access channel, was set up specifically for public use. Public access originally was created as an idea to provide a uh, forum for First Amendment rights, for freedom of expression, and as basically an electronic soapbox. 29 Soapbox airs a wide variety of programs, from religious to political to alternative health. Public access is, is the only place where people really choose what goes on TV. People who want to air their views have access to equipment and facilities which they can use to produce their own programs. While those facilities are free, some people feel they aren't always adequate. On the public access end, um, the studios are woefully inadequate. Most of the public doesn't know that it's available for their use in the first place. There's long waiting lines if you do know about it, and the equipment is 15-year-old technology. The problem is, when these facilities were first envisioned 15 years ago, very few people had cable, much less had the desire or knowledge on how to produce a cable program. Now demand has risen dramatically, technology has improved considerably, and yet our cable facilities have stayed the same. The technology of video has changed enormously in 15 years, and people's access to video has changed, and so more people know they can make video. First, the base was very narrow. Now the base is, is much wider. There's, there's easier camcorders. There's, there's more uh, instructors out there. I think the more instructors you have, the, the more the base widens also. 
Well, I think that unfortunately we made a mistake and had a 15-year contract, and we had no way of foreseeing 15 years ago how dramatically the industry would change and the technology would change. Seattle was very much in the forefront, and now it's very far behind most major cities. Viacom and TCI's cable contracts expire in July. When the city renegotiates those contracts or franchise agreements, it will be the first time since cable's infancy that we will have a chance to address our community's changing needs. And I think the refranchising process that's going to go on in Seattle is going to give the citizens more opportunities to learn about their community, to have a dialogue and be interactive. And I think that the way in which we shape our franchises will do a lot to make sure to empower our citizens to participate, to get the information, and to be involved. And that's what cable's all about. Most major cities have found numerous ways to empower their citizens through cable. In Austin, Texas, viewers can catch their local ballet perform. In Scottsdale, Arizona, they can participate in live city council meetings. In Portland, Oregon, the deaf and hearing impaired can watch their very own channel. And in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, school kids can get some free hands-on experience. Last year, students were challenged to come up with the best public service announcements. The top 20 entrants got to use public access facilities to produce their PSAs, which then ran on public access and commercial TV. Here's what I have to say. Get off those drugs. Locally, numerous people have their own visions of our cable future. The people of Seattle don't really realize what they're missing right now unless they've lived in some other major city recently. So they don't realize that uh, they could have remote trucks all over, that they could go borrow um, portable equipment and produce their own programs about their own communities. They just don't realize that all of that should be available. Also, our rates are very high for the services that we get. Um, I was just in Los Angeles and they have like 50 channels. I mean, you can get programs 24 hours a day in any language you can imagine. Um, and none of that is available here. I would think that we could use an additional four channels devoted specifically to education and that those five channels would, I think, meet our needs for the foreseeable future. Television can become the medium uh, for survival, survival for the deaf population, because many programs we can produce that would educate the deaf, uh, educate business, encourage them to hire deaf people, and so forth. I would really like to see, I think we'd really like to see a lot more interactive programs. Um, there's no reason, you know, we can't have a hospital hooked up um, with a community center someplace providing a two-way dialogue and pr doing health programming. Um, there's no reason, you know, a community center in one part of town couldn't be talking to um, a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout troop in another part of town. Um, there's great examples of that in other cities. I think artists need to know that they can have access to television and show their work and talk about the artistic and creative process and I think it's really important that that work get into everybody's homes and that everybody start to live with art and artists and feel that art making is a daily process and when you see it on TV in your living room and your kids are there watching it I think that can start to make a difference and people won't be so resistant to art and feel like it's so alien and elite. The medium is very high impact it moves people, it touches people, it creates response. It's not a passive medium, it's an active medium. We have the capacity to use this medium to create connection with people. We have the capacity to use the medium to resolve problems in the society. We have the capacity to use the medium to create communication between people who don't communicate. I can't think of anything that would be more important in our society than to, than to use a medium like this to create more community connection. A lot has changed over the last 15 years and a lot will change in the future. This is your opportunity to help set the course for the next generation of cable TV. The City of Seattle would like you to imagine the possibilities and come up with suggestions on what you would like cable TV to be.